rabbit mixing a buttercup dye. Greetings everyone from Watercolors. I'm CM Waters and I'm here to wish everybody a happy Easter. <laughs> Yes, Easter, the holiday that, besides the religious aspects of it, is well known to be the first sign that spring is officially here. A time for children to enjoy having fun outside and searching for brightly colored eggs that their parents hid. And, though not as prolific as Christmas, a time for TV studios to bring out Easter-based specials. Now, there were quite a few options I could have gone with here, but I decided to fall back on the works of a company known as Rankin Bass. You don't recognize the name? Well, even if you don't, you can recognize their style. We're a couple of misfits. We're a couple of misfits. I'm Mr. White Christmas. I'm Mr. Snow. Santa Claus is coming to town. And hey, if you weren't a fan of those specials, there's always what they did in the 1980s. We're here to talk about Easter, aren't we? So let's take a look at one of their three Easter specials and the only one that was actually hand animated. Let's take a look at the first Easter rabbit. Originally airing in 1976, the first Easter rabbit was one of three different Easter based specials that Rankin Bass would release during their golden age of production. It was kind of rare a move that they actually did animation for it because most of their work was stop motion. But the big question here is, does this special deserve to be remembered or forgotten? Well, let's take a look-see and see. We open up with... Whoops, I think it put the wrong season special in. Here, let me go fix that. No, actually, for some reason, this Easter special starts with a Christmas setting as we're introduced to our narrator here, played by Burl Ives, who by this point was no stranger to holiday specials by Rankin Bass. You know all about Christmas and Christmassy things, like how Santa came to be, Frosty, and Rudolph who guided the sleigh. But how about that rabbit? who comes every Easter day. Actually, I'm more curious how you were able to make such detailed figurines out of snow with only the motion of your paws there. Anyway, this leads to our opening and... Ah! Technical nightmare! Er, sorry about that. Let's move on past the intro to the story itself. We see that we begin with a little girl named Glinda getting a stuffed rabbit for a Christmas present. Oh, Mommy, I love him. Yeah, Mom, you might want to get a new personality chip for the Childron 9000 you have there. The one she has right now sounds very defective. Glinda takes an instant liking to the rabbit, since these are the days before electronic toys, and names it Stuffy, also showing she has no imagination with names. And almost immediately, she's also taken in by the fact that there's snow outside and wants to go play in it. As someone who was diagnosed with it in the past, this girl's got attention deficit disorder, doesn't she? Well, it's only fitting that she does, as so does this special, as we cut to a scene with three new rabbits named Spats, Whiskers, and Flops. We quickly learn that these rabbits are pretty much three schemers by their plan they have. Now let me get this straight. We're gonna dig a long tunnel under all the carrot patches in the neighborhood while nobody's around. And when spring comes, we're gonna come back and steal the carrots from underneath. Totally undetected. Me, nee, not bad for beginners. While setting up their tunnels, they discover Stuffy sitting against a snowman, and at first are confused, but soon realize the truth. His odor is unsniffable, undetectable. He ain't a rabbit at all. He isn't real. But I am real. I am. I am. How could this happen to me? And things go from bad to worse for Stuffy as Glinda is diagnosed with scarlet fever, meaning that all her cloth things, including Stuffy, has to be burned. Now wait just a minute! Child gets a stuffed rabbit toy. Stuffed rabbit toy wants to become real. Child gets sick, 
stuffed rabbit toy is about to be burned. Can you say rip off children? I knew you could. Yeah, I don't know why they decided on this either, but the first five or seven minutes of this special is pretty much a trunicated adaptation of the classic story The Velveteen Rabbit, only changing the gender of the child from a little boy to a little girl. Yes, because apparently a story about the first Easter rabbit isn't interesting enough, so we have to rip off other material. But now it's time to actually get to the Easter part of this special as Stuffy sheds a tear. Jeez, this special's playing looser with what the toys can do than the Toy Story movies ever did. Which summons a fairy named Calliope, who helps give him life, as well as inform him of his purpose. Now that you are real, I have a special mission for you. You have been chosen to be the first Easter rabbit. But why me? I'm nobody. And why do we need an Easter rabbit? And why do I suddenly want to find a female and have hundreds of kids with her? Calliope explains that holidays need symbols for people to remember them by, and apparently Rabbit was the best one for this holiday. Easter's here cause there's that rabbit. There's that rabbit Taking some blue from the sky And now you know why there's a hole in the ozone layer. Alright, I will admit, this is kind of a catchy and fun visually song, at least by the animation standards that we have here. The only thing that messes it up for me is the fact that we already heard the first part of the song in the intro sequence, and even then this version is longer and sung by Burl himself. But anyway, after the song, Calliope tells him that his first quest is to go to a place called Easter Valley, also giving him a warning on the way there. But beware, beware of zero! Of zero, 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 zero. Wow, that pixie's got pretty good reverb in her voice. Ooh, how? Wait, don't, don't go. I have so many questions. Think I'll begin with a hop. I see Stuffy takes after his owner in keeping interest on something, doesn't he? Stuffy ends up meeting with our previous bunny trio, and after mentioning that there's a golden Easter lily in the place they're heading, they decide to join up with him under the pretense of helping him after he took a bump to the head. Why do I get the feeling that Stuffy's going to be beaten and bloodied by these three by the end and tossed into a carrot patch for all to see? Okay, my belief is actually misplaced this time, as we get to meet our villain for the story, Zero, as well as his sidekick, Bruce. And yes, you are supposed to say his name like that, otherwise you're saying it wrong. Don't believe me? Take a listen. Bruce? Bruce? Bruce. Zero's whole goal is to find a way into Easter Valley and take the golden Easter lily inside, bringing winter to everywhere in the world. Bah! There's easier ways to do it than that, Zero. Just get a spaceship and fly to Spectra. It's not like they had great defense systems as we saw. Back with our bunny brigade, they arrive in Easter Valley after getting a guide in the form of a bird, and upon arrival see... <laughs> Just trying to be neighborly. Oh great, it's you. You couldn't leave well enough alone and let them try to start Easter by themselves. You had to go stick your big nose in it and try to hog the limelight. Isn't one holiday enough for you, Santa? Well, thankfully Santa doesn't stick around too long, only there to give some moral wisdom to our funny con artist, as well as give Stuffy a plan of action for his first time out. Well, why not pick just one small town for a test? Then next year you can tackle them all. That's what I did first time out. Great idea, Santa. Oh, and ignore children in poor families. It's not like they knew any better anyway. With that out of the way, Stuffy and his crew get to work setting up the first Easter. But Stuffy still harbors some concern for the life he left behind, so he takes a quick trip back to his old home to see Glinda and inform her of the upcoming parade. Oh mother, it was Stuffy, he came back, he came back, and he was really real, and there's going to be a parade and everything on Easter Sunday. And if that girl wasn't an android, she can actually show you emotion when she was thinking that to show how she really felt. But unfortunately for Stuffy, he didn't think about hiding his tracks into Easter Valley, allowing for Bruce to report to Zero about the location of the entrance. That's the way into Easter Valley. I'm sure of it. Excellent, Bruce. Excellent. <laughs> tomorrow, Bruce. Tomorrow will be the end. The end of Easter Valley. <laughs> 
I guess when you live in the North Pole and you're not part of Team Santa, you get way too much free time on your hands, don't you? Oh, and apparently Zero was the one who taught Junkman about how to steal stuff on TV, as we never see him actually take the Golden Easter Lily, instead just showing the effects after he does so. After this, Easter Valley had to officially change its name to Wisconsin. With Easter Valley now in his control, Zero gloats to... Um, the sky, I guess. Bruce, though, is concerned. Gee, Zero, are you just gonna leave them snowed in like that? Ooh, ooh, they may never get out. Bruce? Who cares? <laughs> Let them all freeze for all I care. <laughs> and what happened then? Well, in the North Pole, they say that Bruce is iced hot grew three sizes that day. With our bunny group snowed in completely, Bruce realizes there's only one person that can help them. Santa! Santa! Ooh, ooh, uh, I gotta speak to you! Grr, Santa, this is not a Christmas special! We don't need you here! Jeez, no wonder so many horror movies have you either getting killed or being a killer! So yeah, instead of showing Stuffy using his brains as the Easter Rabbit to get out of this situation, it's Santa Claus who bails them out. And just in time to get all the Easter gifts out to the town they're starting with, including Glinda. And there's a note with mine. It says, don't forget our date, Main Street and 5th Avenue at 12 noon sharp. Wait a second. Did they say date? No, 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 they wouldn't, would they? Never saw you look quite so pretty before. Am I the only one that sees something wrong with that? We have a real rabbit that used to be a stuffed toy flirting with a human girl that hasn't even gone through puberty yet. That has to be illegal in every country on the planet. Alright, alright, I may be overreacting here, as this just leads to a quick little musical number about Easter bonnets, and showing a, well, pretty dull parade. So instead of focusing on that, let's see what happened to Zero now that Santa knows the truth. You miserable roly-poly snitcher, when I get my hands on you, I will melt you down to a tennis ball! You will do nothing. I'm warning you, Zero. Either you put the golden Easter lily back in the valley so that springtime can come back, or I'm moving out of the pole. I've got a good offer from the South Pole, you know, and I've been considering it. Call his bluff, Zero. There's way too much legal trouble for Santa to change where he lives. You imagine how much paperwork he'd have to do just to change all the specials and everything? But of course, the threat that Santa gives is good enough for Zero, and he turns over a new leaf and returns the Easter Lily, again off camera. And then he stops and wishes Stuffy a happy Easter. Happy Easter! Gee, he doesn't seem like such a bad guy. I wonder what all the fuss was about. Well, at least this time we've got a year's start. Huh, Whiskers? Right you are, GP. So you found me out at the very end. Oh gee, what an amazing and unexpected surprise. Wow. Oh, and that's it for the special. Yeah, nothing really truly happens at the end. We just have the narrator wishing us a happy Easter, and that's it. And really, that's the main thing about this special. It's a very much nothing special when you get down to it. Sure, there's nothing really offensive here, despite my outburst about the date earlier. But really, there's nothing too engaging about this special either. All in all, this may not be the worst Easter special out there, but even in Rankin Bass's library, there are better ones. But those are for other years. So for now, to all that celebrated, I wish you a happy Easter, and may your flowers that keep springtime all around be protected from Iced Men. You know, saying that out loud, that just sounds so weird. <laughs>